Hi there. Welcome to the onboarding series for V-Ray for Rhino. In this video, we'll explore the interface and show you how to get around. If you want to follow along with this tutorial or check out the scene later, you can download the project files from the link in the video description. Now let's get started. The first thing you need to do after installing V-Ray is set it as the current renderer from Rhino's render menu. V-Ray comes with toolbars with shortcuts to the most commonly used tools. These tools are arranged in sections to help you work with geometry, lights, proxies, rendering, and utilities. You can turn these toolbars on and off as you like. They can even be docked in the user interface. The V-Ray Compact Toolbar and the V-Ray All Toolbar are used the most. In the V-Ray Asset Editor, there are separate categories for materials, lights, geometry, render layers, and textures. If the icon is blue, we're looking at that category. White means we aren't looking at that category, but that category contains some data. The gray icon means that category is empty. For example, in the lights category, we already have a Rhino documented sunlight, and in the textures category, we have an environment sky map. If I right click on the texture tab, I get a dropdown with different V-Ray textures I can add. Similarly, if I click on an empty tab, like the Render Elements tab, I get a list of different render elements V-Ray can create. By holding Control when I click, I can pick multiple elements without the list disappearing. This works with the Geometry tab, where I can add proxies and scatter objects, and the Lights tab, where I can create unique lights and choose from a range of V-Ray materials in the Material tab. You can also hold Control to select multiple categories, or just use Control A to see all the categories. We can also create materials, textures, and other unique tools by clicking the plus icon at the bottom of the Asset Editor. Now let's open the Flyout menu on the left side. Here, we can create and load custom libraries of V-Ray assets that we can share with our colleagues. To add something from the library to your project, just drag and drop it into the project assets and it's ready to use. If you want to create your own library, you can start by clicking on an asset from your project. Choose Save As from the drop-down, or just drag and drop it into an existing library. V-Ray comes with a bunch of pre-made resources you can use. This library is called Chaos Cosmos. We can get to that from the left-hand menu, or by clicking the Chaos Cosmos browser icon in the V-Ray toolbar. Here you can browse an ever-growing library of different 3D models, materials for all kinds of scenes, and loads of HDRI textures for creating realistic lighting. Back in the Asset Browser, we still have the right-hand menu to look at. First thing you'll notice is that it changes depending on what you've selected. For example, if you have a V-Ray material selected, you can change options like diffuse reflections and glossiness. You'll see a preview of your changes at the top. Selecting a different asset, like a light, changes the options in the right-hand panel. Now we can change intensity, color, and lots more for each light. Now click on the small gear icon to open the Settings tab. Here we can change render settings, like what hardware to use for rendering. We can choose from CPU, CUDA, and RTX cores. Below that we can pick whether we want to render progressively or use buckets, and the quality of the render. If you look to the right you can see what exactly these presets are changing. And further down we can adjust more rendering settings like camera options, exposure and depth of field, and output formats, where we set the resolution for our final renderings. When we're all set with the render settings, we can click on the teapot icon to start the rendering process. This will launch the V-Ray Frame Buffer, where we can watch our render take shape. The V-Ray Frame Buffer is super handy, allowing you to add all sorts of color corrections and to composite your images without ever leaving V-Ray. To finish up, just save your finished render by clicking on the Save icon in the V-Ray Frame Buffer. By now, you should have a good feel for the V-Ray for Rhino interface and know your way around. Be sure to watch the other videos in this series and check out our blog and documentation for more helpful hints and tips.